Y'all, as of right now, the video that we're going to be reacting to today has 974,000 444 views. One thing that you guys brought up in the last reaction video is that sometimes the worst routines have the best views. So is today's video going to be one of those? Let's see. This video was posted by Stephanie Voltaire in July 2021, and then she hit us in December 2021 with her daytime routine. Now, both of these videos are like blowing up. People are feeling Steph. So let's watch. Hey, you guys, Stephanie here. Welcome back to my channel. And for today's video, you guys, it's going to be all about my skincare routine. Now, it is very important to implement both a day and nighttime routine. But to be honest, having a good nighttime routine is really where the magic happens. And it was honestly how I was able to transform my skin from this to this. This video was highly requested, so I'm just going to share with you guys the products that I use in my nighttime routine. And just a quick disclaimer, you guys, I am not a skin expert, so all of the products that I mentioned, it may not work for everyone and their skin type. So just be mindful of that while watching this video. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So in this clip, it is super late. I had just came home from being out and I'm so ready to take my makeup off and go to bed. But first, before you even touch your skin, wash your hands you guys to ensure that my hands are nice and clean i like to use my dr bronner's pure castile soap all right y'all so now that my hands are nice and clean it is finally time for me to remove this makeup girl i feel like nowadays i just hate having makeup on my skin all day and to remove my makeup i'm first gonna start off with good old coconut oil i feel like this is the easiest way to remove your makeup it really helps to melt all the makeup off your skin and I love to do this step before I go in with my makeup remover wipes because it really ensures that I take every bit of makeup off my skin. So I'm just going to take a generous amount of the coconut oil and rub it all over my face. And don't forget about the neck ladies, you want to make sure to get down there as well. And just a quick warning, this can get a little bit messy. As y'all can see, I already got coconut oil all over my robe, but it's okay though. As long as we get our skin nice and clean, that's the goal. And next, I'm going to follow up with my makeup remover wipes. And I like to use the ones by Neutrogena. These are also fragrance free. And this step is pretty much self-explanatory. I'm just gonna wipe the excess coconut oil off my face. And I typically like to use about three wipes to ensure that I got all the makeup removed on my face. Y'all heard Stephanie, wash your stinking dirty hands. I mean, she ain't say it like that, but you know, wash your hands before you do your skincare routine. So coconut oil. <laughs> Now, yes, coconut oil is something that a lot of people love to remove their makeup because it easily dissolves your mascara, your foundation, you can all your stuff, all your layers of makeup. However, <laughs> coconut oil is not for everybody. It is, it is not for the streets. You'll get bit. <laughs> now, the thing with coconut oil, it can be fine, just fine. People use coconut oil all over and they're just fine, right? However, for many people, it can be extremely comedogenic, which means that it can clog your pores. And if you're somebody that's acne prone, you probably don't want to go down that route. I personally do like to use a cleansing oil. Um, I'll put a link to a couple of the cleansing oils that I love and have used before in the description box. I would say about 87.8% .8 of the time I'm doing my double cleanse in the shower. That way I can get all messy makeup and stuff just flying all over the place. And then she used a makeup wipe. Now, Makeup wipes can be a source of contention on these skincare internet streets uh, because a lot of people do tend to misuse them. Some people think that, you know, that's all they need to cleanse their skin or that it's taking off all their makeup. Another thing that I find with makeup wipes is, you know, for lack of a better term, some of them aren't wet enough and you kind of like gliding them against the skin and that friction, friction for some people can be irritating, you know, irritation, inflammation, hyperpigmentation. Now, I'm not saying she's using it incorrectly. She's actually using it in a way that it's beneficial to her routine. But if you don't want to use a makeup wipe in the way that she's using it, you can either use a wet paper towel or Clean Skin Club has these uh, towelettes. They're like you know, a little bougie paper towel that are said to be biodegradable that you can use in this instance instead. You know, you wet it, 
and then you can use it to remove the oil and then you move on to your next step. So next I'm going to move on to my cleanser and I'm first going to start off with this purifying foaming cleanser and this is by La Roche Posay. Now I like to start off using my cleanser without any water so I'm going to take one pump of this product and apply it directly onto my face without any water and I'm going to work the cleanser into my skin. I heard by using this technique, you're really allowing for the cleanser to pretty much do its job and effectively cleanse the skin and remove any excess oils. And I like to do this for about 30 seconds before I apply any water to my face. Now I've been using this product for a couple of months now and you guys, I really love this cleanser. It works really well on oily skin types and it's also safe for sensitive skin. And this is another product that is fragrance free. I find that some products that have fragrances in them, they can cause a little bit of skin irritations. So I would recommend that you try to use a product that is fragrance free. So that's really interesting how she's using the cleanser dry on her skin like that without using any water. Now it is not gonna work for every cleanser that's out there because some of these textures and formulas may might be like oh, rubbing real hard on your skin, but it's really interesting that she's doing that. I haven't tried that particular La Roche-Posay cleanser that she's using, although she is making me think like, yeah, I kinda wanna try that. However, La Roche-Posay does have a cleanser that I really like, the Olipicar Wash. It's a really gentle cleanser, it's more for all skin types, um, whereas the one that she's using is more geared towards like normal to oily skin. So if you have dry skin, you probably don't wanna use her particular cleanser, maybe look at something else. Now, she made a really good point about using fragrance-free products. Now, fragrance is not something that is going to affect everyone's skin the same way. There are some people that are like, ah, get away from me with that fragrance because my skin is just gonna bump up. And other people are like, no, darling, give me all the fragrance. I want all of it, right? However, if you are someone who you're, you have no clue how your skin responds to something, or you find yourself constantly in a cycle of you get irritated or you break out and you're getting hyperpigmentation, you probably wanna err on the the, the side of caution and try to limit the amount of fragrance that is in your skincare. Now you still need to try to figure out what it could be that's irritating you in your skincare routine because God forbid you go and get a fragrance free product and it contains another ingredient in it that actually irritates your skin. So bottom line, you gotta figure out what your skin triggers are and unfortunately, sometimes it comes with trial and error. However, this is why I always tell y'all, when you're trying something new in your routine, do a patch test first. If all is good, then you slowly introduce it into your routine. This allows you to mitigate any irritation before it becomes too big, before that mess blows up rather than just jumping in, trying something new, slapping it on your skin and hoping and praying for the best. We off that. This next item was an absolute game changer for me. And I'm talking about this facial cleansing brush. Now I picked this one up from Amazon. And to be honest, I don't really think you need to spend $200 on a Clarisonic brush when you could just spend $20 on a brush that's gonna do the same thing. Now this item is not sponsored. I just honestly love this brush and it only costs about $25 and I've been using it now for about a month and it works just as well. So I'm just gonna put some water on the brush and use it to further cleanse my face. And I like to do this for about another 30 seconds. You guys, if you're not using a facial cleansing brush in your routine, get one now and you'll thank me later. This is an item that I would highly recommend. Like you need a brush in your routine, period. Dearly beloved, we need to pour out a little liquor in honor of our homie, Clarisonic got caught up in the crossroads. May it rest in peace. Now here's the thing, right? I have not tried every single cleansing brush out there. I'd be crazy if I did. However, back in the day, I did use a Clarisonic regularly, maybe once or twice a week. Um, and then sometimes maybe I'd, you know, kind of slide off of it for a little bit, but pretty regularly one to two times a week. Now, I tried one of them inexpensive dupes of the Clarisonic and that sucker cut up my skin after like one try. You know, there could be some of these inexpensive cleansing brushes that are better than others, but just be careful out there. Now, to me, the Clarisonic had a softer brushes. They had the different, the various brush heads, you know, for various situations. But that's not to say you out of the ball game if you buy an expensive cleansing brush because I remember Clarisonic came out with a Radiance brush head and the direction said to use it daily and I did that, and by day three, that mess had cut up my skin, so just be careful out there. And do you need 
a cleansing brush? I'd say no. If you have one in your routine, you love it and it works fine for you, go in and lay hair. However, if you're someone with active cystic pimples or you have sensitive skin, uh, be careful. Also, I kind of want to spend a few seconds here on black women hairstyles and, and skincare, okay? Now, if you don't want to hear this part, there are timestamps listed below, so you know, go ahead and check out the timestamps. However, um, in a couple of these reaction videos, we've had people who've had the beautiful hairstyles where they have their baby hairs laid down and it looked good, and they, you know, they try to preserve the hairstyle. Now, I think that you should find a happy medium with expressing your hairstyle and also taking good care of your skin. I'm of the school of live your life, boo, but be careful right? So I don't think that you need to give up your favorite hairstyles. I think you just have to, you know, kind of maybe do them in moderation and be smart about it. Now, when I have my edges laid, whether it's the swoop de swoop or back when I used to straighten my hair and, you know, I wanted to have my edges laid back and straighten and whatnot, of course you don't want to go and be splashing a bunch of water on that because I have natural hair, it's going to revert. And even if I had relaxed hair, it could still mess up my hairstyle, right? So what I would do when I was trying to protect those kind of hairstyles is, you know, would wash my face like regular, being very very super careful around the edges. Then I would take a cotton pad saturated with micellar water and then gently get whatever I might have missed so that I can cleanse around there without interrupting my hairstyle. Now obviously when I don't have the hairstyle in, you know, it's all it is here. My bad if things shifted had to have some artwork and some mirrors put on. So make sure you check out my lifestyle channel if you want to, you know, see a little bit more about me. Anyway, back to what I was saying. I don't think that there has to be this like no swoopity swoops or no laid edges and stuff like that because, you know, be artistic, be yourself, express yourself through your hair. However, use your judgment. If you notice breakouts in certain areas, you know, maybe you want to kind of switch things up so that you're not constantly putting, you know, hair on that particular area. Also check out what you're using in your hair care products because it could be something that you're using, a gel, a conditioner, a shampoo, something that you're putting in your hair so that when you sweat or as you're washing your hair out, it gets into your skin and, and it causes issues for you. So just keep that in mind. If I'm done rinsing off my face, I'm gonna move on to my second cleanser. And this is my Pore Normalizing Cleanser by Paula's Choice. This cleanser contains salicylic acid, which is gonna help to gently exfoliate the skin. And it's also gonna help to minimize the pores and help to reduce blemishes and dark spots. Now, because this is an exfoliating cleanser, I don't use this every night. I typically use this cleanser every other day or whenever I'm wearing makeup. So on the nights when I don't use this cleanser, I typically tend to follow up with this hydrating facial cleanser. And this one is also by La Roche-Posay. I'm gonna insert a picture of it so you guys could see what it looks like. So although exfoliating your skin could be very beneficial, you want to make sure that you're careful not to over exfoliate your skin. So just really listen to your skin and see how your face reacts to certain products. So now that my face has been thoroughly cleansed, I'm now going to use this paper towel to dry off my face and I'm making sure to pat my skin dry. You don't want to ever use a rubbing motion. Now let me tell you something. If it's one thing about Stephanie, Stephanie is going to reduce irritation as much as possible in her routine. I love that. That Paula's Choice cleanser does have salicylic acid in it. Salicylic acid aka BHA is an ingredient that exfoliates the skin but it's also beneficial if you have acne or issues with clogged pores because salicylic acid it just goes right up into that pore go deep into that pore, clears out all the gunk, and tries to, you know, make your skin a more hospitable environment. So this particular cleanser has 0.5% salicylic acid, which is a pretty low dosage, and it can be something that you could use daily. A cleanser with actives in it, like this one with salicylic acid, can be less irritating on the skin because it's not something that's left on your skin. It is something that you're going to rinse off. But our good sis Stephanie here, she was like, look, Look, man, I'm not leaving anything up for challenge here, which is a very smart way to go about your routine. And then if down the road you decide, okay, I need a little bit more, then maybe you can maybe increase the frequency that you use it or maybe look into increasing the potency. You also want to avoid over exfoliating your skin because if you over exfoliate your skin, you can damage your skin's barrier. And once your skin's barrier is damaged, who's gonna protect you?
You're gonna be susceptible to all kinds of stuff with a damaged skin barrier, not to mention that mess hurt. And she's also being really smart here with using paper towels because your household towels, your face cloths, you know, some of those can hold bacteria in them. So using something that's disposable like a paper towel or you have the Clean Skin Club towels, which I'll link to in the description box if you're interested, that you can use instead. Next, I'm gonna use this rose water and glycerin has my toner. Now, toners could serve a lot of great benefits. Not only does it add an extra layer of protection on the skin, it also helps to further hydrate the face and remove any excess dirt, oil, or makeup. So I like to apply the toner on my cotton pad first and use the pad to apply it all over my face. So toner does have a lot of roles. You have toners that are hydrating, you have toners that are exfoliating, you have astringent toners, etc. But I wouldn't say that their role is to remove excess makeup. I think that if you feel like you have a little bit more makeup, maybe use a micellar water with a cotton pad, or maybe take a little extra gentle time of massaging your cleanser in. Now I'm stressing this because I noticed that some of you you guys out there don't realize that there are different types of toner. Sometimes people just say toner and they use any product that's called toner. And it's not even your fault because, you know, the skincare industry has all of these things that are called toners. However, the product that she's using is something that's very hydrating, likely not gonna do harm to a vast majority of people out there. You know, and it might be the, the one odd weird situation where maybe somebody's irritated towards one of the ingredients that's in it. However, when it comes to exfoliating toners, I do not want you to think that that is something that you need to use every time to remove your makeup because exfoliating toners, you know, you can get into that cycle of over exfoliating the skin, ruining the skin's barrier and just a whole heap of mess. And you already know, irritation, inflammation, hyperpigmentation. Next, moving on to serums, I'm first gonna start off with this Hyaluronic Acid Serum, and this is by The Ordinary. This serum is gonna help to further hydrate my skin, and it's also gonna help to give my skin a supple and smooth appearance. So I'm gonna use one full pump of this serum and apply it all over my face and neck. Listen, I love my serums and I like to use a generous amount, okay? And I would also highly recommend this brand, especially if you're a beginner and you don't really know where to start as far as products and brands. The Ordinary is really a great choice to begin with and their products are actually of great quality and very effective on the skin. Next, I'm gonna move on to my next serum and I'm gonna use my Biosense Lactic Acid Resurfacing Night Serum. And this serum is what gives me that glow you guys this is another staple product of mine in my nighttime routine whenever i use the serum at nighttime i wake up to glowy soft supple skin i just love the serum and this is another product that i would highly recommend stephanie's just so pretty she said ain't she pretty y'all it's just a joy to watch her so the thing with hyaluronic acid serums or any like hydrating serums in your routine they are best used on damp skin i couldn't tell if that's what she did or not but just so you know if using a hyaluronic acid serum it's best used on damp skin so your skin can be damp with water so you can after you cleanse your face while your face is still a little bit damp you can apply that um, HA serum. Or if you're gonna do a hydrating toner, while that hydrating toner is still a little bit damp on your skin, then you can apply your hyaluronic acid serum. Works much better on damp skin. Now, would I recommend the Ordinary for Beginners? <laughs> Say that it has a beginner price point where it's like you know what if i'm going to experiment and maybe try different things at least i'm not breaking the bank so i would say you know price point wise yes for a beginner however see what i see sometimes in the comments and elsewhere on the internet um it, it there is a little bit of a learning curve with a brand like the ordinary now it, they make it easy for you because they put the directions right there on their website for you to read. However, we know that some of y'all out there yelling with the reading and stuff. So if you're going to take the time and be patient and read through things and kind of really understand your skin, then yes, The Ordinary is an amazing brand and you can save a lot of money that way. However, if you ain't about the reading and stuff, I would just say get a multitasking product that's formulated to work together than to be playing scientist. Cause you know, scientists read, you know what I'm saying? Like. Now that Biosant serum that you're using, it has lactic acid in it, which is a gentle exfoliant. And some people find that lactic acid is more hydrating, more gentle on the skin than some of the other AHAs. I haven't tried that particular serum, but she, she is kind of, I ain't gonna lie, Miss Stephanie is over here selling me that serum. I'm like, I don't even need it in my routine right now. And I'm like, 
<laughs> but we ain't done yet. I got one more serum left and I'm going to apply this niacinamide dew drops and this is by Glow Recipe. Now, I've only been using this serum for a couple of weeks now. This is a recent add to my routine, but I already really like this product. It has a great consistency to it, which feels great on the skin. And it also smells so good, you guys. It has a watermelon scent to it. So niacinamide is a form of vitamin B3 and can serve a lot of great benefits to the skin. It helps to treat hyperpigmentation and can also help to reduce oil production on the skin, amongst other things. I have a oily skin type and using a niacinamide serum really helps to regulate my oily skin so i would highly recommend this serum or to implement any niacinamide serum of your choice especially if you have oily skin type like me stephanie's right niacinamide does many amazing things for the skin it helps with hyperpigmentation like she mentioned it helped to balance out her oily skin niacinamide can also be beneficial if you have dry skin because it helps to protect the skin's barrier which reduces inflammation and that can help to reduce some of the dry flaky skin. Now the thing is, niacinamide has been around for a long time. I know it feels newish because people talk about it a lot these days. However, most people probably won't need a separate niacinamide product in their routine. Check your products and check the ingredient list because there might be niacinamide in a lot of the stuff that you already use and you don't need to, you know, overdo it. You don't always, you don't want to overdo things. You know what I'm saying? Now that particular product that she's using, people love that glow recipe watermelon dew drops. I've seen people do hacks where they put it in their makeup and it makes their makeup and their foundation look glowy and beautiful and yada, yada, yada. People love that. Me, myself personally, I couldn't get past the smell, man. I couldn't get past the smell. My nose is a little like, ooh, ooh, ooh. That, that's just me. But you let me know your thoughts on the watermelon dew drops in the comments. This is the step now where I'm going to spot treat my problem areas using my skin light cream. Now, this product has done wonders for my skin, you guys. This is honestly the product that transformed my face. But there is a lot of controversy around this product, especially because this contained hydroquinone, and there's a lot of controversy around that ingredient. So just a disclaimer, do your research before you get this cream. But I had to be honest with you guys and share this product. Now, I suffer from melasma on my skin. I have it on both sides of my face and this product has truly helped to treat my melasma so i would highly recommend this product especially if you have melasma and it also helps to treat hyperpigmentation and blemishes so i'm just going to use only a small amount of this product to apply it all over my problem areas i believe this product is a prescriptive treatment but to be honest there's ways around that <laughs> now here's the thing with hydroquinone it is considered the gold standard for fading hyperpigmentation and discoloration by the dermatology world however it is not meant to be used long term two months on two months off if you misuse hydroquinone you can wind up with situations that are extremely hard and then sometimes impossible to revert. Now, as of 2020 in the US, you cannot, you're not supposed to be able to get hydroquinone over the counter. You can only get it with a prescription. The fact that it's not readily available is something that is in debate by many dermatologists and others in the medical community. There are a lot of people in the medical community who are in agreement that hydroquinone should not be sold over the counter and that you can only get it with a prescription. But then there are also a lot of people who are like, come on now, give the people the stuff. It is what it is. Now, this compound that she has sounds really interesting. So it has tretinoin in it, it has hydroquinone, and it has an ingredient in it called Mometazone furoate, <laughs> which is used to treat inflammation. That combo sounds like, you know, like discoloration what? However, it is nothing to be played around with, so this is exactly why you need to get it by prescription. And I don't agree with being able to find ways to go around it because number one, you can wind up with a bootleg and the bootleg can have God knows what in it. And then two, it's like, you know, there's a reason why certain things need to be done under a doctor's care because should something go wrong, that person knows what to do. Typically, this is something that is very customized to you and your situation, which is another reason why I don't think you should go around trying to get this without a prescription. And she has melasma. Melasma is a form of hyperpigmentation that can be really tricky to treat. It can be triggered by hormones, um, heat, sun exposure. Like if you have melasma and you're going outside without protecting yourself with sunscreen, 
and then like if you're outside for a prolonged period of time then you're not reapplying you are greatly playing yourself because you can worsen your melasma like big time and lastly i'm gonna top off everything using my CeraVe pm facial moisturizing lotion now this is a gel-based moisturizer and i would recommend that you use a gel-based moisturizer especially if you have oily or acne prone skin because usually they're more lightweight and they're typically oily free to prevent adding any more oil to the skin. So I too have oily skin and I too love a gel moisturizer, probably one of my favorite textures in skincare. Um, but however, I live in New York City, so a gel moisturizer is not gonna cut it for me in the cold, dry winter. So keep that in mind, the climate where you live or if like you move or you travel a lot, that is going to affect your skin. So you may need to adjust things accordingly. Maybe you need to switch up your moisturizer, or your cleansers or so on and so forth. Also, if you have hyperpigmentation, there are some moisturizers that you might want to look into first. Dr. Alexa Stevens did a video on this and I tested out a couple of the ones that she talked about. So check out her video and mine. Y'all, my skin is feeling so good right now. And I just wanted to give you guys a close-up shot of my skin. Now, my skin is still not perfect. It's not flawless, but I feel like I have definitely come a long way with my skin. So overall, I think this was a good solid routine for Stephanie, but there are also a lot of tidbits that you can pick up even if you don't have her skin type or her specific skin situation. For instance, Stephanie seems to be really cautious. She seems to really have a true understanding understanding of what her skin can tolerate and what she shouldn't do. And I think that's good. I also love the fact that at some point she did go and see a pro. That's how she was able to get the prescription compound. I cannot stress enough how important it is in our routines. If you're really looking to up the ante on your skin, it is imperative that you see a skin of color pro. And I say skin of color pro because Hey, everybody should be poking and prodding at our skin, okay? I have a video on how to find one in your area. Now, that can be an esthetician, it can be a dermatologist, it can be a combo of both. I also love that Stephanie celebrates her skin wins. At the end of the video, she said, this is what my skin looks like now. It's not, it may not be all the way where I want it to be, but it still looks good. And it, I think it looks absolutely amazing. And I think that is a good attitude to have. I think you, you guys out there, you gotta celebrate the small, along with the bit. If you remember to wash your face before you went to bed, that's a win, celebrate it. I mean, obviously you're gonna need a little, do a little bit more than that eventually, but you know, still a small win there. If you put sunscreen on every day for a week, win. I mean, yes, you wanna wear sunscreen all the time. However, still celebrate those small wins because it does something to your spirit and you're gonna wanna keep doing it. Then Stephanie came back and she updated us with her daytime routine. It's a simple five-step routine. Make sure you watch her full video. I will link it below so you get the full understanding. However, I'm just gonna summarize it here for timing. So in the morning, she cleanses with a gentle cleanser and her cleansing brush. I wonder if she uses that every day because the cleansing brush might be okay for her to use every day but you know just be careful out there with your skin not everybody can do that then she does a hydrating toner she uses the deep hydration one from fresh then she follows up with a vitamin c and ferulic acid serum then used a moisturizer from elemis the pro collagen moisturizer and she finishes with the neutrogena spf face mist and she stresses how important it is to use a sunscreen. And I love that she demonstrated using this the correct way of spraying it in your hand and then applying it to your face. I'm not quite sure because videos are edited and sometimes you know people take things out or truncate things for timing. Look like she didn't put on enough. But you know, just in case, I'm just gonna say, make sure you put on enough of your sunscreen because if you don't put on enough, you're not getting the SPF that's listed on the label. Now, how much is enough? two milligrams per centimeter square of skin. Now some people are real crafty, you know, they measure their faces and they measure, they measure out their sunscreen and so they know that they're putting on the right amount, right? Now, for other people who, you know, you're like, eh, I ain't trying to do all of that. <laughs> you can do a guesstimate, a quarter to a half teaspoon of sunscreen. So you can get your little measuring cup and measure that out. Um, but you know, this is enough for your face, neck and ears. So I would probably lean more towards the half a teaspoon side if you're gonna do you know, your face, neck and ears. 
I personally use my body sunscreen from, you know, here down, because, you know, facial sunscreen can be a little bit more expensive, but that need to hell know this. But it's super important that it, you don't spray it directly to your face, because you can wind up with some of the mist going here, some of it going here, some of it going here, and who's that helping? No one. And then the floor be all slippery, you slip. And then you wind up in the emergency room, then you gotta stay in the hospital, and the food ain't good, and the nurse giving you an attitude. It's just a mess. Overall, though, great job. You can tell that Stephanie really knows her skin, and our good sis definitely definitely does her research. So again, you, you keep them comments cute, no bashing, none of that, cause it, it, it's not gonna be there long. <laughs> it won't stay there, I don't play that. Anyway, if you are into skincare reaction videos, here's two more for you to look at, and I'll see you fine folks in my next video. Bye guys.